So I've just started a new project for the bees. Um, as you can see, I've drilled some holes. So what's gonna happen is if that's your hive body, put that on top of the bees, put that on top. It's got your holes drilled out. And what most people do is get the ball jars that have the two piece lids and um, they glue they glue that lid, the outside rim, over the hole so you can screw your jar on um, and then just leave that middle bit out. Oh, they've, um, all the people that usually sell the ball jars don't have them at the moment. So I don't know when they come back, then I'll be able to do that. I have tried to obviously cut it out with not much success. So I'm just gonna sit the jars over the top of the holes and um, hope that they stay there. They should, I don't see the bees moving them. Um, so yeah, I'll get the jars prepared and film that. So part two of the jar experiment. I've got 550 mil jars here. Um, same ones that used to come with double lid, but now don't. So, and I got my pack of super thin foundation. This is the this is thin foundation, not foundation like you use in your hives. Um, this is for um, doing comb honey. So you don't want, if you can see that, it'll focus. Um, you don't want the thick stuff because you people are going to chew it. Like you don't want that. So I've got my pack of thin foundation and try and do this somehow. I'm going to measure from about there. I've got no idea. What's that? about yep I haven't got my glasses on so maybe I should get my glasses we'll pause it okay so now I've got my glasses on we'll go and we want it from the bottom but there's a little bump in the bottom and we want to go up to Obviously not the whole rim. Uh, so I reckon if we go about nine centimetres, that's going to be good. Now width-wise, width-wise, I reckon we go by whew, what do you reckon? Seven, seven centimetres? Might actually might actually take the lid off because then we're going to be for sure so the rim's actually not as wide as the jar so the bees will finish that I'm going to have to sterilise this jar again so we'll just go from edge to edge sorry I'm doing the camera work myself so yep. so if we go 7 so if we go 9 by 7 or 90 by 70 then we should be right so we'll do that I'll uh, get set up for that and I'll be back okay so I've tried to as you can see mangle it a bit I've uh, tried a couple of different ways to stick it to the thing I don't want a blob of like clean wax underneath so what I've done is my wife actually come up with she won't come on camera even though I reckon she's got a better voice than me she's much better looking um, she's come up with maybe folding it over a little bit and we and we just ran a flame over it very gently it's just one of those little butane little butane buddy things butane torch um, just ran that over it and made it stick 
I just folded over a centimetre. So we said we wanted uh, nine by seven, nine centimetres by seven centimetres. Um, so that's where I cut it out. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go 10 centimetres and that'll bring it up a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, I did try melting it and just sticking it to the bottom of the jar. Um, so as you can see, there's bits and pieces in there. Didn't work too well. Um, we're all learning. Um, I've never done this before. So as you can see there, just fold that over and it's all natural. And as you can see, it's beautiful. No big pile of yellow wax from rendered wax that we've melted and put in there. Um, I don't think that looks good. So yeah, so I'll uh, cut another one. We'll see how we go. So I've stuck them down a uh, little varying degrees of success a uh, couple of holes you gotta be careful because like it's so thin that the flame just eats it so you've got to keep it away see that one there a few drops um bees aren't going to care so what i've also done is we've cut them i've cut these ones perfect um as big as they can actually as big as they can be look at that that's beautiful nice and square i actually got one square yay um right in the middle um, so what I've done is with the off cuts tiny little starter strip okay this one here is a bit wider and this one's in between so what I'm going to do I'm just going to get a black texture because the bees can't get to the, the jars Sorry about my fingers there. Bees can't get to the jars. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a black line down the bottom of the jar. That's just gonna show me that that's only that wide compared to a full sheet. Because foundations is like quality Australian foundation is not cheap. And if you only have to cut it that wide and it takes three days more for them to fill the jar than doing that, who cares? Um, as long as you've got a good flow, you only make comb honey when there's a good flow. Um, because otherwise they won't draw it, they won't cap it. It has to be capped or it'll ferment. Especially if you're not, these jars we're gonna to top up with honey. Um, so it's a little bit less um, imperative. But if you're doing Ross rounds or any of the other sorts of comb honey, it must be sealed. Because if it's not sealed, it will ferment on you. Um, and then, yeah, I don't mind a bit of fermented honey, but, uh, usually like it in a glass, not a not a bit of comb. Okay, so it's been a minute. Um, I've already gone through this hive and they've filled up their two supers of honey, which is really good. There's still a little bit in flour, so I'm hoping that if we put the, um, put the jars on to do the comb honey, we'll, uh, they'll draw it out. We shall see. So I'll just give them a bit of smoke. I don't want to disturb them too much because I'm only going in the top, but I've got to smoke them down because we don't want bees up the top. And of course I've left my hive tool somewhere. Never find a hive tool. Okay. Hive tool. Alright, so we'll just open them up. Smoke them down. Obviously we'll need to take some of this comb off.
We're going to put the board straight on top. Not too many flying up, which is good. We don't want them up in the top because they won't be able to get out. Alright. Chuck our board with the holes in it on top. If you remember, I did some lines, because we're going to see, so we're just going to unscrew them, and put them over there. As you can see, there's no bees coming up the top, so place them over there like that. I do like the idea of being able to screw them down, but unless I find those jars again, Real little one, real tiny piece of time. See how they go with that one. All right. Now, obviously, you can't leave it like that. So, need to get the bees out of the lid. And they're not cooperating. Come on. Oh. Oh. Come on, girls. Get off. Alright. That's better. Now we'll put our empty, just an empty super over the top. I'm very impatient, so I reckon I'll leave it for an hour or so, and then I'm going to come and actually have a look to see if there's any in there, because it's a bit exciting. I've never done it before. I want to know. I know a lot of you out there probably want to know too, how long it takes them. Um, I haven't. I've only got my phone, so I can't put a camera in there like some people do. Um, maybe one day. We'll, get up to that stage but um, that'd be pretty cool wouldn't it like to actually put a time-lapse camera in there that can show you how long it takes them to draw it out um, maybe we'll inspire to do that in a couple of years when so yeah all right take it easy so I know it's been a bit of a long video but uh, thanks for sticking around and um, please like and share my channel um, so that we can grow. Um, I hope I don't bore you too much. And uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions on what we could do, uh, leave them below and I'll see what I can do. Um, so hopefully part two, once the girls have drawn out the comb, we'll have a look at that and uh, I'll video that and we'll go from there. So till the next one, take it easy.